What up is Marcus Dynasty Bull Dads? It is Christmas time. It is almost draft time. We have two more days. And so I'm going to give you my rankings and then we'll do some more, again, uh, draft stuff here in the next couple of days till we get to draft, uh, the draft day. So my rankings, pre-NFL draft, uh, this is super flex. We're going to do the top 12 here. And, and the 101 is pretty easy. We're going to talk about it right off the bat is B. John Robinson. B. John Robinson is the 101 in every situation that I can possibly think of. Uh, the only situation that, that really concerns me is if he went to New York. But why would he go to New York? Like, why would New York do that? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, B. John is it is the RB1 in Dynasty, and you have to take him ahead of some of these quarterbacks. There is no generational talent when it comes to quarterbacks. I mean, there's a potential with Anthony Richardson, but Bijan is the 101 in Superflex. Do not make a mistake and pass him up. Uh, he is close to in as close to a guarantee at the running back position that you can get. And so Bijan Robinson 101, we're going to get into this second tier now and i always talk about tiers really tiers are more important than the actual rankings per se uh because a lot of these guys are really really close a lot of these quarterbacks are incredibly close so 102 has been my 102 i think the entire time bryce young who is now going to be potentially the odds on favorite for vegas to be the number one overall pick and we want that number one overall pick uh, yes you have the josh allens you have the lamar jacksons you have some of these quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes that are the third, fourth quarterback taken. But when it comes to players that I think are, uh, I, when I when it comes to players that are going to have playing time, players that are going to be safer, it, it, it draft capital, the, the closer you get to number one, the better you have in chances for long-term success at the NFL level or continue to get these starting gigs. And so Bryce Young, who I think has a really high floor, the ceiling is a little bit lower with him at least. I think Bryce Young is the 101 when it comes to Superflex. I think he's the number one quarterback, the number two overall pick when it comes to Superflex. But if you have an argument against that, uh, which a lot of people are going to have their 103, potentially be the 102. And, and right now that's Anthony Richardson. He has the extreme upside. But watching more and more film, honestly, it's like every time I hear an Anthony Richardson hype, hype piece, I, I go back and watch film and I go, oh. Man, some of that film is absolutely disgusting and looks horrendous. And you're like, how is he going to make it at being an NFL quarterback? Similar to Malik Willis. I will say there are some Malik Willis aspects where Malik Willis, you look at his quarterback abilities and you go, ugh. Anthony Richardson's faster, bigger, stronger. Uh, just incredible. Like the most athletic quarterback that you could potentially make. But is he an actual quarterback? That's the problem. I mean, Terrell Pryor was an athletically gifted uh, player. And we've seen other athletically gifted Quarterbacks, I mean, uh, what was it? I can't even think of the Ohio State guy that went to Houston. Um, what, Braxton? Braxton Miller? Was that what it was? Like, we've had athletic quarterbacks. We've had very, very good quarterbacks that have not made it to the next level. But we've also had some of these guys that have transitioned and become better at the next level, which is rare. But you had the Jalen Hurts. You had Lamar Jackson, who was just a, a gifted uh, athlete that you could just not stop at the next level. His Throwing, though, has been very suspect. But we're talking about fantasy football. If Richardson plays, he's going to be a very, very dangerous fantasy player because he could ultimately do what Justin Fields did for a stretch there and just absolutely just destroy, or destroy meaning do, doing great in certain fantasy situations. So super flex, he's 103, high risk, high reward. We've talked about this previously in the previous weeks of when we would draft uh, Richardson over Young or what situations would lean Richardson over some of these other quarterbacks and players. Number four, C.J. Stroud. We'll see where his draft capital goes. I still think that you're going to have four quarterbacks in the top 10. I think C.J. Stroud's going to be a top five pick. C.J. Stroud, number four overall here. Very similar to the Bryce Young that has a little bit. Uh, he, he, so if you have Bryce Young, high floor, low seed, lowest ceiling, then you have C.J. Stroud, which is like a little bit more. And then you have Anthony Richardson that is the volatility. You can't even see it off the, the screen here. It is way high, way low. Uh, so C.J. Stroud here, a little bit lower floor, a little bit higher ceiling. Uh, I do really like his accuracy at Ohio State. Ohio State quarterbacks have seemed to struggle. Uh, even Justin Fields struggled. His, his running ability kind of uh, bails him out. And C.J. Stroud doesn't have that type of running ability. So we'll have to see what that turns into at the next level in the NFL. Number five, number six. These are, again, in this tier two. If you want one of these positional players over a quarterback, I can see a path for it. So 105, Jameer Gibbs. And we've talked about Gibbs versus JSN at length here. And so I'm not going to 
bore you with that type of argument again. Just know that right now, Gibbs is number five overall. We'll see where his draft capital goes. And we'll see where he ends up going as it... Does he go to a Saints team? Does he go to does he what team does he end up actually going to? That will be that'll make a little bit of a difference here for Jameer Gibbs. Number six, Jackson Smith and Jigma. Uh, you have to have him. He's, the, he's been my number one. A lot of these rankings, it's funny. We've talked about it. We've had a little bit of players move up and a little bit of players move down. And honestly, from four months ago, going through everything, the only player that has made a drastic difference has been Richardson. Anthony Richardson with the the, the, the underwear Olympics and everything, he's moved up. He was in that kind of third tier into this that 7 to 12 range, but now he's just moved up into a different tier because he had the athletic gifted measurables. And so JSN, he's number six overall here, but I think he's as safe as you can get. I am extremely excited to see him at the next level. I mean, for how much I liked Garrett Wilson, I like JSN even more. And that just shows that, I mean, Garrett Wilson... Garrett Wilson is so good. And then you have Jackson Smith and Jigma, who was younger and better on the same team. So you have to look at that, at least at the collegiate level, and go, man, he is so safe, so good. Just please don't go to New England. Please don't go to New England. Please don't go to, like, Baltimore or something like that. Just go to a team that at least has somewhat of a competent quarterback that can throw. Number seven, we're going to drop down a tier. It's going to be Jordan Addison. I still like Jordan Addison despite his thin frame and and maybe a smaller statue here i do think he still gets separation at the next level he does get open um deontay johnson ask of getting separation and everything maybe not the quickest maybe not the fastest but does get open and that's what i like to see at the next level that produces some of these wide receiver twos probably not wide receiver one potential for jordan addison but you have a lot of value in the dj moore the terry mcclurns the deontay johnsons and those players will give you a lot of value here so uh jordan addison here number eight will love us if he gets drafted second overall which he's a favorite of right now as i'm recording this video he might move up in above jordan addison but i really have a hard time with will levis i see a lot of bust potential and there's a lot of things i just don't like about will levis he reminds me a lot of zach wilson and and, and maybe that's just recency bias which totally i admit when you get burned or not burned i didn't even have i never even draft drafted zach wilson but he was somebody that i had as my number four quarterback and i draft there's teams that i recommended to draft zach wilson gosh was that over javante and stuff and now it's like you look at it man it's like zach wilson is yeah, that's what happens with quarterbacks sometimes you just get the josh rosens and stuff where they absolutely just are a worthless pick will levis reminds me too much of that too much of the josh rosen too much of the zach wilson too much of the um i'm blanking on names right now uh, texas a&m johnny menzel reminds me too much of that type of personality and Maybe that's just, again, recency bias. Uh, number nine, Zach Charbonnet. Love, I, I love Zach Charbonnet. I just need to see that he goes in round two. Please go in round two, and you can keep this spot. If you go in round three, it depends on where you go. If you go round four or later, which I don't think is going to happen, uh, then he's going to definitely move down a tier. Number 10, Quinton Johnston. There's some big concerns for me on him. Um, he is a big wide receiver. He's not incredibly as fast as we thought he was going to be. He's... I wouldn't say a one-trick pony, but there, there's a lot of issues with Quentin Johnston. He has the athletic measurables to be a good wide receiver. He even has some good yards after catch, but he's got to catch the ball. He also is a big drop guy, big, I don't know if it's focus drops, and we don't see that necessarily improve a lot from the college level to the NFL level. So that is a huge concern because if he starts dropping it or goes to a team that can't can't get uh, accuracy, uh, can't throw accuracy balls to him, He's not going to be able to separate like a Jordan Addison, like a uh, JSN, like the guy that we're going to be talking about next. He just can't separate like those players. Number 11 is going to be Zay Flowers. I like him more and more and more. And there are potentials that I might want him over uh, Quentin Johnston. He just, Zay Flowers, yes, he's he's another smaller frame. You're going to get a lot of like these slot or these smaller wide receivers. But it, in this new age NFL, I would say... That's what they're looking for. They're looking for separators. They're looking for players that can get open, uh, especially with some of these like rules that you can't, you can barely touch a wide receiver at times, and you can't hit a defenseless wide receiver. More and more, of these wide receivers seem to be uh, succeeding at the NFL level, and and weight's not been a, a huge issue. Um, he seemed to pack on a little bit of muscle and weight, so I like Zay Flowers here at number twelve. Uh, Devin Achain. 
speed, speed, speed running back. Um, likely going to be a little bit more of a gadgety running back. Uh, but what he can do is he can bust it open. He does have some in-between the tackle stuff. Uh, but Devin A. Chain right now is kind of a huge flyer at 12. This number 12 position could, honestly could change a lot. I mean, there's Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, there's uh, Josh Downs. There's a lot of players that I like into this 12 range. And so, again, this that that tier is so big. I just picked Devin A. Chain as my number 12 because realistically, I could see him getting that high or draft capital but i mean this could change we could have a number of our round one round one wide receiver or an early round two wide receiver that ends up bumping Devin a chain out uh like a mims or something along those lines so um i hope you enjoyed this i can't wait till draft time let me know what your draft questions are peace out we'll see you again soon